In this video, we'll be discussing about comets and meteors. Comets and meteors are some of the most spectacular sights in the night sky. If you've seen one of them, I'm pretty sure you won't forget it for a lifetime. We have a few clips of them coming up, so hang on till the end to watch those. Let's start with comets. Comets are made up of rocks, dust, and ice. Comets revolve around the sun, just like the planets, but comets don't produce their own light. So that all that uh, fiery, shiny thing that you can see in the picture, that's a reflection of the sun's light. J just like the moon reflects sunlight, these also reflect the sun's light. There's one point on the comet that's called the nucleus. And this point has most of the mass of the comet. The comet has some kind of, uh, you know, big entourage tail kind of thing that follows it. And that is basically called the tails of the comet. So this tail is called the gas tail because it's made up of gas. This tail is called the dust tail because it's made up of dust. If you look at the orbit of a comet, it's not circular, it's pretty stretched. And uh, if you look carefully at this diagram, you'll see the direction of the tail. Which, which side does the tail point towards? The tail points away from the sun, right? Everywhere, away from the sun, away from the sun, away from the sun. Why does that happen? Well, the tail is formed because of the sun's heat. Sun's heat causes the ice on the comet to melt and it causes other things on the comet to vaporize. That's what makes the dust and ice tail. But why does the tail point away from the sun? That's because the sun actually has a kind of wind blowing out, a kind of pressure due to a wind that's blowing out. So small particles flow out from the sun. And that wind is what causes the tail to move away from the sun. This is now actually very similar to a flag or a wind sock. You can see in this video, you can look at the wind sock flying in a particular direction. So you know that this is the direction of the wind, right? Uh, the sock points in the direction of the wind. Similarly, the tail, the dust tail and the gas tail, they point away from the sun because the direction of the wind from the sun is away from the sun. Okay, now uh, the earth is somewhere there. So the orbit of the comet is very large. And because of that, what happens is at some points, the comet is visible when it's close to the earth, close to the sun. When it's far away from the earth, or far away from the sun, it's not visible on the earth. Okay, so uh, because of these large orbits, comets take a very long time to complete one entire revolution of the orbit. It could be 200 years or more than that. And because of that, they are not visible very regularly. We'll look at the picture of one of the most famous comets in history, and that's called the Halley's Comet. Very popular one. It's been documented by historians for over a thousand years repeatedly. Uh, the interesting thing is, the, is that the Halley's Comet was seen in 1910-1986. It'll be seen in 2062. Uh, the interesting thing is that the gap between two occurrences is always 76 years. Every 76 years, this is visible on the Earth's surface. And the reason for the 76 year number is because it takes one, uh, it takes 76 years to complete one entire revolution around the sun. And so it comes back to the same place 76 years later and we see it from the Earth. This comet is uh, one of those comets that you can actually uh, see once or twice in your lifetime. And uh, this is uh, pretty special. Most of the comets appear 300 years later, 400 years later. So there's a high chance we wouldn't even see it in our entire lifetime, even once. Let me show you another very, very nice comet, very uh, nice as in good to look at, called the comet Neowise. It was seen in the year 2020. And here's a video of that. Spectacular, isn't it? Okay, so that's comets for you. Now let's move on to meteors. Meteors are what we call as shooting stars. Let me play a video. I'm pretty sure you've seen a meteor before. Can you see those streaks of light? Those are basically meteors. I'm sure you've seen meteors uh, at some point in your life if you were observant enough. Uh, meteors uh, are very interesting because they're not in outer space. Meteors are actually very close to us. Let's let's dive in. So. There are a lot of rocks near the earth. When these rocks 
get attracted by the earth and are pulled into the earth's atmosphere the friction in the earth's atmosphere causes these to catch fire and then this is how it looks so when it enters the earth's atmosphere it starts burning there you go that burning that fire is the streak of light that we see in the night sky uh, most meteors burn out completely before they reach the earth's surface they don't come and strike the earth's surface uh, let me write that down. Most meteors burn out completely in the atmosphere. Okay. But there are some cases where meteors have struck the Earth's surface and left a huge crater like this. There are quite a few craters on the Earth's surface which were by meteors. Now, meteors that hit the, hit the Earth's surface, they're called meteorites. These may cause craters. If they're large enough, sometimes they're very small, like a small pebble, and that does not cause a crater. But if they're large enough and they are falling on, onto land and not the sea, then they can cause craters. Now, your question might be, if you claim that this was created by a meteor, where is the meteor? Or where is the meteorite? I don't see a rock here. Right? What actually happens is it continues to burn, it continues to, well, that's my way of showing fire, maybe a little weird, but it continues to burn and finally burns out completely, evaporates, and some dust is left over in this crater, but the rock as such, the meteorite as such, is all evaporated and gone. So that's why you can't see the meteorite there. An example of a meteorite is the lunar lake. In Maharashtra. This lake was, uh, this crater was formed by a meteorite long ago, thousands, years, thousands of years ago, and then water at some point flowed in and it got filled up and we have a lake because of this. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you.